Hey everybody, it's Michael Tiny Soul back with another video. Please take the time to read this disclaimer and this disclaimer. If need be, please pause the video so you get a chance to read them both. So this presentation is going to be my trading rules. Okay, and that's me, Michael Tiny Soul. I bet everybody's real impressed with the effects I added to my PowerPoint presentation, but whatever. I'm fooling around with it, so just bear with me. Okay. Now, you have to please understand that this is just the framework for my rules. Okay, This is in no way meant to be a trading business plan video. Now, I'm going to do that video very shortly. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of educational videos, such as an introduction to trading, an introduction to selling short, uh, money management, trading a trading business plan introduction to charting i'm going to be releasing all those videos free of charge and you're not going to have to pay for shipping or anything because it's all going to be hosted on a website and you'll be able to view them at your leisure you're probably going to use youtube for it so uh you're going to be able to, to view all that educational material absolutely for free and that's going to be coming in the next uh, few weeks as i i put them together but this is just the framework this is just a preliminary video and it's just the framework for my trading rules okay these may or may not be appropriate for your trading business some people may say you know what this doesn't apply to me now i don't believe that and i'm not saying this from a, you know, a conceited point of view but i just believe that what I'm going to talk about in this presentation, I just feel that they apply to all traders over all whatever, all asset instruments or whatever financial interests, whatever you want to call it, uh, whether you're a stock trader or a futures trader, or options, forex, okay? Um, I believe that a lot of these rules are, you know, should be in stone, but that's just my opinion, okay? You need to customize it to fit your trading, tear it. Uh, smash them, stretch them, compress them, whatever you need to do. You need to customize it to fit your trading. So let's get started. And the first thing uh, is the most important thing. It has the fanciest spinning letters is money management. Okay. And in my opinion, money management should always be talked about first because it is the absolute most important part of your trading business. Okay, without a sound money management grid, without a sound money management plan, you're pretty much doomed to fail. Okay, and whoops. Okay, you can see I'm screwing around with this. Okay, uh, the first rule is always use a stop loss. Now, I know everybody's going to sit back and go, all right, I've heard this 20,000 times. If you're new, maybe not, but... You know, by the time you're doing this for a few weeks, you're going to hear, oh, always use a stop loss. And it goes in one ear and out the other. And it shouldn't. The problem with the statement, always use a stop loss, it's been said so many times that people become desensitized to it. And they say, I don't need a stop loss. I don't need that. I'm in control. Okay. Now, I know for me that I must always use a stop loss. Now, some people say, well, I, I use a stop loss, but I don't put it on my trading platform. Okay, if you could still execute, that's fine. But what happens and what I've seen happen is I don't want to put the stop loss on the platform because the market makers see it or whatever excuse you're using, which is absolutely ridiculous. And then the trade comes down to your stop loss or goes up to your stop loss if you're short and you make excuses why you want to hold on for a little longer. And the biggest excuse is, is that one time you did and you gave it a little more room and it actually turned around and made you money. So now you think it's always going to do that. Guess what? It's not. I have to use a physical stop loss. Okay. It helps my discipline. I don't have nearly enough discipline in this business. So I need to put a physical stop loss on the platform. I never, ever, ever add to a loser. I just love these super gurus that come out and will sit there and go, well, I was down, but, you know, I doubled up and I got out. Well, that's great, okay? That's great if you have unlimited money and you have unlimited money coming in from people that you are taking advantage of. But for the common trader, okay, 
And that common trader could mean somebody with $5,000 or $5 million, okay? They don't have unlimited money for them to continue to just add and add and add and add and add. And I've done it so many times. I've added to a loser, and sometimes it's come back for me, but most of the time it doesn't. So my rule is I never, ever, ever add to a loser. I take the trade if it goes against me. My stop loss is executed, and I move on to the next trade. I try my best to let the market take me out at all times. What this means is my first target is fine to, to achieve. Okay, boom, I hit that first target, I take a piece off, and I let the rest run, or maybe I'm, I'm getting out in thirds or quarters, whatever it is. I always want to let the market take me out on the next few pieces. I always want to trail stops. Okay, this way I can try to milk a winner for all it's worth. Now, I have a very hard time doing this. A lot of times, if I'm long, I'll see resistance, and I'll say to myself, hey, time to get out. Or if I'm short and I see support, hey, time to get out. But I'm working on this. It's a work in progress. I've been trading about 15 years. Okay, so uh, it's still a work in progress. And for those people who think they're experts and perfect, I have news for you. The market can humble you very, very quickly. You must always be working to perfect your trade, whatever it is, okay? I want to increase size when I'm trading well and decrease it when I'm trading poorly. A lot of people do the opposite. I know I have in the past, okay? When I'm trading bad, I, I overload the size on the next trade in order to catch up, and it's just a recipe for disaster, Okay, what I try to do is I try to increase the size when I'm trading well, and I decrease it when I'm trading poorly, and I have a methodology that I follow in order to do that. Let's talk about biases. Okay, Now, there are only two times that I will have a bias. After a follow-through day and after a continuation pattern sets up. Those are the two times that I have a bias. Now... What is the difference between a bias and an opinion? Oh, you're just using, you just, it's semantics. It's not. An opinion means that I have, a, I went through a thought process and I feel based on my analysis that we're going to go in one direction or the other, but I'm remaining flexible. A bias means I'm only leaning in one direction. Okay, I can only go long, I can only go short. I do have biases. They're after a follow-through day and after continuation pattern set up. When I can't have a bias is I cannot have a long side bias when we are below the 200-day moving average unless it's after a follow-through day. And I cannot have a short side bias when we are above the 200-day. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean I can't take any long side trades if we're below the 200-day? Absolutely not. Does that mean I can't take any short side trades when we are above the 200-day? Absolutely not. I can still go long if we're below the 200-day, and I can still go short when we're above the 200-day. But I tend to manage those trades a lot tougher. Now, this 200-day moving average is based on the daily chart, by the way, because I know some people have asked when I've done other videos, well, does this mean intraday too? No, it just means the daily chart. But the 200-day is my line in the sand. I used to call it the bull and bear barometer. Okay. Now, market direction. Woo, did you see that one fly in? I love it. When I'm looking at Forex currency trading, I like to follow the dollar. Now, some people I know, they use the yen, they use the euro, they use whatever is moving, uh, you know, moving or has the most volatility with it and looks for, look for crosses and pairs that way. I like to start with the dollar and follow it and then look at the currency pairs and crosses based on that. For futures, I use the advanced decline line, the advanced decline volume line, and the VIX first, and the trend a distant second. Okay, now this is for index futures, the S&P futures, the Russell futures, the NASDAQ futures, okay? And the Dow futures too, sorry, I forgot about that. Now for stocks, see the futures, right? I, I use everything that I use for the futures, and then if I'm looking for intraday setups, I do a bottom-up approach, which means I start with the stocks and move up from there. I like to see what's going on inside the market first. 
but when I'm doing my analysis on a daily or weekly chart, I start with the index, the major indexes, then go to the sectors, and then go to the stocks within the sectors. Okay, so that's how I determine market direction. Now, woo! If you would like to contact me for any reason, there are a number of ways to do so. This is my blog www.tinystmv.blogspot.com. Please check it out. tinymjs at gmail.com is my email. You could follow me at Twitter at twitter.com forward slash tinyreel. And you could follow me on StockTwits at stocktwits.com forward slash tiny. Thanks so much for joining me. Please send me feedback. Please post feedback for this video. And I appreciate you taking the time.